Hi, my name is Farb Nivy and welcome to Grokit TV GMAT Test Prep and MBA Admissions course. Later on, Stacy Blackman is going to join us and take us through the MBA Admissions portion of the course. But for now, let's jump into our first GMAT class where we're going to get a high level introduction to the GMAT and then we're going to drill into the critical reasoning lesson one. So you can go ahead and follow me here. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, my name again is Farbud Nivi. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Farbud and that's probably the easiest way to uh, get a hold of me is send a, a tweet with at Farbud. Um, also, I'm the founder of Grokit. I've been a test prep instructor for uh, about, about 10 years uh, in the GMAT, the LSAT, the MCAT, the GRE, the SAT, the ACT. Uh, it's, it's a long list. Uh, I've worked for the Princeton Review. Uh, I've worked for Kaplan um, and I was honored to be the Princeton Review's National Teacher of the Year uh, back in the day uh, when I worked at the Princeton Review. Um, but now I'm the founder of Grokit and uh, we're uh, uh, launching our first Grokit TV course with you guys live um, and uh, as we're about to do that um, we're going to obviously talk a lot about the GMAT so let's start at a really high level and just ask ourselves what is the GMAT a test of? Uh, the simple answer would be uh, there's some math questions, there's English questions, grammar questions, uh, reading questions and uh, certainly we have to deal with these challenges uh, but the GMAT isn't really a test of how good you are at math or how good you are at English grammar it's really a test of your information management skills uh, and when you think about the test that way it makes a lot more sense especially when you're thinking about getting an MBA and being a business person and having to manage a lot of information quickly and effectively so the GMAT is really an attempt at a test of your information management skills uh, with the questions being in the guise of math and English uh, questions. So how does our course work? Well, uh, it's absolutely free to watch live. You can watch all 16 sessions of our course over the next eight weeks uh, while we're streaming it live to you completely for free. Uh, if you want to re-watch any of the episodes or download it to your iPod or iPad, uh, you can do that. The course is just $99 to have access to the entire 16 sessions. Um, and after the course ends, it'll also be available, uh, but it'll be a little bit more then. So uh, you're free to, we'd love to have you join us here uh, twice a week over the next eight weeks. Um, and you can join us uh, for free just by going to grokit.com slash TV. So here we are, uh, a whole group of us of GMAT test takers. Uh, we look like good, successful business people. Uh, we're ready to take the GMAT and we're ready to uh, become MBA uh, stars. Um, so our job here uh, for the GMAT portion of the course is to turn ourselves from these fine looking people uh, into what I like to refer to as GMAT robots. So <clears throat> we're going to learn to turn ourselves into a machine that will uh, take the GMAT as input, we will process it and we will give GMAT answers as our output and uh, we will have a, a methodical way of going through that. Every type of question that we see we will know before uh, what we're going to be up against uh, and how to process that type of question. We'll give ourselves all of the rules and regulations for being uh, a GMAT robot so we're going to go from this before uh, to this after and you'll hear me say that a couple more times uh, as we go through the course. So <clears throat> who makes the GMAT? We asked ourselves uh, what is the GMAT a test of? It's a test of our information management skills uh, and now it's time to ask ourselves uh, who makes the GMAT? So the GMAT is made by people um, who have a type of name um, and they're called they're called psychometricians. So psychometricians are people who have PhDs in psychometrics, which is essentially psychology plus statistics. It's a lethal combination insofar as being able to make standardized tests is concerned. So psychometricians are the professionals that design and administer and analyze exams 
Um, they're very thoughtful, methodical, and they have lots of algorithms and statistical models that help them do that. And in Grokit, we apply those same models in our application uh, to adapt the system to you and to provide you the full length cats that we do that give you a predictive GMAT score. Um, so we have our own psychometricians on staff that are uh, essentially helping you uh, figure out the GMAT and design our system so that it's, uh, it's based on similar algorithms. So there are a couple of ways we could make a test and it's important to understand that the GMAT picks one of these designs. So we could make a test where each question just gets excessively successively rather um, harder but we had a long time to do it say even days several days to work on this exam and in this situation we would go maybe from questions that started as 2 plus 2 um, but by the time they got near the end they were asking us questions about quantum physics and very few people, even given several days, could get to the point where they could answer the quantum physics questions. Um, and the GMAT doesn't take this tact. Um, the sort of inverse of this would be to make a test where the questions are essentially doable, if you will, but you're not given enough time. Not enough time. And this is the tack that the GMAT takes, and most standardized tests take, and tests sort of in, in, in general do. Um, so we have a test that is doable. The math on the GMAT um, is, you know, in American uh, high, sort of high school mathematics, it does not get into calculus or uh, any math beyond high school. Um, and and the, the English are sort of accepted uh, grammar rules. Um, and we will see uh, that they don't even really address all the possible grammar rules. They address a handful of them. Again, the test is a, uh, the GMAT is a test of our information management skills. The questions are relatively doable. Um, we can also learn them if we don't know them now. Um, the test is just does not give us enough time. So what we're going to be concentrating on is making sure that we can be effective and efficient when we're taking the test and uh, that would be like a robot, right? We're going to turn ourselves into uh, GMAT robots. So uh, let's talk about our brain because our brain will be important when taking the GMAT um, and psychologists understand how the brain works and there's a phenomenon that occurs that a lot of people are familiar with when they take exams. Um, and you see we have our cerebral cortex which we can uh, also call our new brain uh, evolutionarily speaking and we have our old brain and in the new brain we do a lot of our uh, thinking. Uh, we also process language and uh, vision, a lot of vision processing and human beings have very developed cerebral cortexes um, but our old brains are sometimes called our reptilian brains because uh, anatomically they're very similar to a reptiles and this is where we're processing things like smell uh, we're also processing our uh, emotions. Um, and this is important on the GMAT or in any state of uh, heightened stress or emotion. What happens is being as our brains are sort of anatomically designed this way, uh, our old brain can sort of take over our new brain, if you will, when we get nervous and stress and our sort of thinking turns off. And we've all had that experience where um, we're on a test and there is a fill in the blank question and we can't think of what the word is but we know we know what the word is because we were just talking about it a few minutes ago um, but our nervousness sort of shuts that uh, information in our brain off and uh, we can't think of it until a, a little bit later. Um, so the time crunch elevates our stress um, and then uh, we often resort to not having full access to our brains um, so that's also part of why we want to become sort of robotic and rule driven about it so that um, this doesn't occur um, also the the thing to take in mind is that uh, our brain is taxed with two um, tasks on the GMAT one is to 
process information, uh, the other is to remember information. Um, and on the GMAT, uh, you'll have a pad that you can use to, dr uh, to write and draw on. Um, and that pad, um, if you use it correctly, should replace the task that on your brain. Uh, so <clears throat> this is sort of the range of the GMAT scores and what sits in the middle and, and, and this curve is very Im important to um, the GMAT or any standardized um, test. Great. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> let's talk about some resources uh, for the GMAT and MBA admissions prep. You may know about these and you may not. Um, the first one, of course, MBA.com is where we register for the GMAT. Um, and I think something really important here is to go and download the GMAT bulletin. Uh, go ahead and download this. It's a PDF that you can access at MBA.com. Um, and the GMAT bulletin will give you all of the rules and regulations for the GMAT. So don't listen to your friends that have taken it or are taking it. Um, and quite frankly, don't really even listen to your instructor um, because uh, the GMAT bulletin can change uh, whenever the GMAT wants it to. Um, so it's important for you to uh, know that you're getting the most recent set of rules um, and you can access that here. It will tell you um, about registering for the GMAT. It'll tell you what you can bring on the day of the GMAT. Uh, it'll tell you about the rules around breaks on the GMAT. Um, so for example, uh, if you want to take a break uh, during your GMAT during a section, you'll have some optional breaks uh, that are given during the test, um, but you can also uh, take a break um, in the middle of a section. Um, so will the clock run while you take that break or can you pause the clock in the middle of a section to take a break? Um, well, you can take an official break um, during the test and the administrator will um, change your computer to break mode, um, should change your computer's mode to, for you to be in break, on break, um, but the clock will still run. So that's a regulation that you know, I read recently in the GMAT bulletin, but that could change. So uh, it's important for you to know what's going on um, accurately and most recently. So download the GMAT bulletin from MBA.com. I told you about some of the resources at Grocket. Um, we have full length CATs that you can take, computer adaptive tests like the GMAT that will give you a GMAT score. Um, we have thousands of GMAT questions that you can answer and work on on your own. Uh, and more importantly, um, with all of the students that are taking this course, um, it's important for you to all uh, work together in group study. Um, this is how I've always taught my courses. This is how I've been able to get my students the results that I've gotten them. Um, because being able to teach somebody else a piece of the course that you understand uh, is more helpful to you, quite frankly, than it is to them, even if you taught them something they didn't know. Um, and I know this as a teacher of many years, the more I teach it, the better I got. Um, and the test is much, much easier for me now than when I began teaching, but that's because I've been teaching the course. So we designed Grocket uh, to help leverage that, and uh, you can get the most out of combining your solo practice with group study and then working with instructors as well. Beat the GMAT is an excellent resource, uh, forum, uh, source of uh, re resources in different forms of media. It's just a real all-around uh, all good GMAT um, uh, resource for anyone that's preparing for the test or the, their MBA um, and lots of uh, other students to sort of connect with um, like you can in Grogget. Um, and then StacyBlackman.com, of course, we're big fans of Stacy Blackman. Uh, she's uh, the top admissions consultant uh, in the MBA space and uh, she has many years of experience getting uh, students into the top schools all over the world. So uh, if you need a free consultation, I believe uh, they do provide that at StacyBlackman.com, but she can tell you more about that a little bit later.